Hello, this is Dancing Burr, the mad scientist of creative writing, the voice of the voiceless, president-elect of Myerskoff College, Lancashire's favourite son and your autistic prince. And I'm Tom, the other guy, Koala. <laughs> so... Have you had a good week? I have had a good week, actually. What about you? It's been all right. I can't really say that. <laughs> no. Obviously, peeling back the curtains from behind the scenes, Yeah. we have started recording a couple each time we meet yeah just so we don't miss our recording date anymore welcome to the backup episode (laughs) well (laughs) it's not a backup episode well no true because it's just how it goes up as long as we don't say the time and the date we're doing it no one's gonna know this yeah fair enough you could be listening to it this two years in the future that'd be weird that would timey wimey wibbly wobbly Mm. So, what were you talking about? I was, we were talking about, um, just before we started recording, predictions of 2020, mm. um, and basically the future, what, the 20s decade, the 2020s Death. decade, have installed for us. Um, you, you made an interesting prediction that you believe in, give or take, 10 years' time. What are your thoughts on what will happen to DC? Now, what you had to say were quite compelling. Would you mind repeating what your... your prediction yeah so basically the state of dc detective comics i like people call it dc comics that's detective comic yeah. comics <laughs> okay. it's, it's one of them like the nevada desert is yeah. nevada is desert isn't it or yeah. is it no Sah- sahara is desert yeah so it's the sahara yeah. so it's the desert desert yeah but anyway dc have relabeled themselves so many times yeah. they changed the logo they They've cut um, many franchises yeah. and heroes, and they've yeah. they've rebooted like the New Fifty Two, the Rebirth yeah. the, before that. Their their laws all over the place. Their movies yeah. are failing. They're struggling. They've announced that they want to be one of the first comic things to be mo- mostly digital. Yeah. I reckon they're going to be gone in ten years. If I'm honest. Someone's going to have to buy the rights to these characters and someone else. They've shut down Virgo Comics, which for those that didn't know, is a legendary um, publisher that made things like V for Vendetta 300. Yes, I'm aware. I didn't know the company so yeah. much that made them, but I'm aware of the works, as it yeah. were. So why, though? What's just, going on? Like, because wh- of the Marvel movies, yeah. there was a, a, a big boom of people buying yeah. them comics, people that were just introduced to it. And Marvel... I, I get quite fatigued by reading Marvel comics sometimes because of the whole... They rebooted and called it Marvel Now and then they just carried on. Marvel then, Marvel. <laughs> but, um, well, Deadpool actually makes that joke himself. Welcome to Marvel Now, not Marvel then. <laughs> Deadpool can do that, though. Yeah. Um, but with Marvel, it runs into this thing where they used to, an event in in comics used to have years in the making it leads up to it right uh like civil war or for example yeah but now there seems to be an event every other month right and it, it's one of them well there's one going on now and if i want i was oh a carnage event where yeah. carnage is going after other symbiotes and heroes and shit like that but to get the full story i've got to get like 20 25 different comic issues every week or two weeks yeah. and it's like mm. Mm, it's quite sad really isn't yeah. it when you actually put it into consideration like characters that have been like, around for 90 years yeah i mean to well say, 80 i mean I, you know me i love me batman he's he's always the go-to guy for me in detective comics but there was a, a piece of news about batman one a writer i can't remember her name has actually turned around and said the character batman is toxic to any story he's in for those who are just listening, obviously, I pulled a, a bizarre facial expression as I just went because into thought mode. Why would anyone when, say that? When Why? he's in his own, fine. But if Batman goes into another comic, the focus isn't on your new character or your character you're writing, like Shazam yeah. or something. Yeah. Your character, your focus is on Batman because he has to be the best in this comic. So really? Is that the character's fault, though, in a the narrative only, perspective? The only way they can do it is if he's with someone that's almost perfect like superman because whenever he's in a comic there's strict rules or something that dc do like he can't be beat he can't be it's like 
yeah. in, when he joins someone else, say Shazam or something, or yeah. Constantine, which he does quite a lot, I Batman, didn't know that. Batman can't be seen to be in any real duress or danger. So he can't be challenged in them, which means there could be a major, major villain, but it's all right. Batman, the normal human, will just take it. See, they've shot themselves in the foot then, really. Do you see what it? I mean with that? Like, yeah. now do you get what I mean by she's saying it's toxic before anyone, like, shouts at me? Yeah. It's like, you're very limited once he enters the room. Because there's no real... Because, right, yeah, because I get he, the point he there. has to be the most intelligent. He has to be, like, the best at hand-to-hand yeah. combat. If he joins another hero, yeah. he can't... You can't push him to his limits because he's not allowed to be seen as... Uh, some rules at DC say it's something like he's not allowed to be seen as worse than whoever he's with. Right. So what is the chemistry like between Bruce Wayne's Batman and Constantine? Well, Constantine is DC's equivalent of, of a Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. I was going to say The difference is, is that uh, well, they're both quite standoffish. They're both quite... Uh, they are both bastards, really, aren't they? Yeah. Whereas Constantine... Ref- he doesn't like to use his magic unless it's a last resort. He's all about that small tricks and <laughs> things yeah. like that, if, if you know the character. But, see, I love the Constantine character. Constantine, but whatever, however What you is the it. actual pronunciation? I don't uh, know. I've always pronounced it as Constantine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Constantine. I'm sure someone will correct it's, us. It's John yeah. Constantine. Yeah. And, um... If we're wrong, that is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But no, I just love the character. He's he's got quite a relation to certain heroes. Like Batman is the one that brought him into the fold. Right. To if there's a threat that the Justice League can't deal with, yeah. He, John Constantine, is one of the most respected like users that in the is world. Fascinating. That. And even though there are actually some big, yeah, magical powered heroes that will respect him, people like Shazam. Yeah. Constantine can actually has actually stolen yeah. his powers. Wow. Just for a quick joyride around. Oh, that's pretty. God pretty himself in the DC universe recognizes John Constantine and respects him. Wow. I need to start reading detective comics. Well Can you get me the comic? I've got Constantine meets Batman. Just a story. Any story of him. Uh I have some Justice League Dark from the New 52 era and some older yeah. um, Constantine before the incident. There's a really funny story. Go on, go on, elaborate. <laughs> uh, now I'm either getting this confused with the guy that writ... Um, no, no I'm not. I was about to say Lucifer, but that was Neil Gaiman for a lot of times. So one of the writers of John Constantine in his original series, which was Hellblazer... Yeah. John Constantine looks is based on Stig. Stop gay. Stig? The police. What's his name? <laughs> Sting? The singer. The yeah, singer singer. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said Stig, I'm thinking of the yeah, guy. No, the... I said Stig. Yeah, uh, Sting. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. He's based on him. And I love Sting. I'm yeah. a big police fan. Are you a police fan? Uh, not really. But go on, you were saying. So he's, he's based on him. Yeah. And, um... Basically, the writer, after, had to research, or he really threw himself in, um, and he researched some demonology stuff and stuff like that. Right, And yeah. apparently, he started to start actually seeing the character, John Constantine, around in his everyday life. A man with a coat and a hair, and, and he thought, I'll just write off it's one time. But he kept seeing him until one point, he actually had himself committed because he thought he'd accidentally brought this character to life. When he was researching demonology. Really? Turns out he was just having a mild psychosis break. But yeah. Because he kept seeing him everywhere. Who's, who, who's this? Sorry, the writer? The writer of Constantine. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't think it was... It, Sorry, that was It was, was either loud, but... the original or one of the others that took over. But yeah, for a short time, one of the writers of Constantine went a bit nuts. <laughs> oh, i got to look into this character, man. He's a, he's a brilliant character, but he's... He's not your hero. He's... I wouldn't call him an anti-hero. Right. He, but I would. Yeah, I guess he's an anti-hero. He will do whatever it takes to make sure the right thing is done. 
but that includes sacrificing his friends, and he will do it without remorse. Right, I'm with you. He will throw it, his team, his, his an entire team under the bus. He will curse people if that if he has to. He will do. He's a very one track mind. Right. Do, do you get what I mean? Yeah. This is getting done. Don't care who I've got to kill to do it. Fair enough. This is what I love about you, man. The, the knowledge is... Well, it, I learn something every time well, we do it's a just podcast. I, like I, these le- comics. I learn something every now. I just like these comics. especially This character just sort of resonated with me. I because... didn't know. Call me an idiot. I didn't know Constantine has been known on occasion to operate in the same universe as Batman. Didn't enter me head. Didn't know it. Well, I honestly didn't know that. Who, who do... Who do the Justice League turn to to deal with a problem like Teen Titans Robin and his yeah. her father? And well, you've yeah. got to turn to someone that knows the mystic arts. Yeah. Um, Lucifer exists in that world. The the show yeah. he's supposed to exist in the DC world, and it's quite funny because Lucifer cannot be hurt by any mortal. Right. But Lucifer is based on one hundred percent in the comics David Bowie. Don't surprise me. And actually, I can see. The, as apparently, as the exact when the artist was talking to Neil Gaiman, it's like, what do you want it to look like? And apparently, there is no out there that says, make the most perfect man you can. Yeah. Almost like David Bowie. Scratch that. Give me David Bowie. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so that is that is a thing out there. But Constantine, here is a fact for anyone on Constantine. I'm sure someone will try and correct me, and I will tell them to politely go fuck themselves. Constantine has beat Superman in a fist fight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go on, carry on. Constantine has beat Superman in a fist fight. Just, you don't have to mention the said person. Did you have anyone in mind when no, you said that? No, when, when it comes to comics, do some people do get really... But no, Constant, ma- Superman has no resistance to magic. Right. So there is somewhere in the earliest days where comics were, especially DC, were all over the place. Right. Constantine took both Batman and Superman to hell. Why? I think they were under mind control. I will right. have to look into it. And he beat them both in a fist fight. Oh, because wow. in hell, there's a lot of magic around so he could use it to his dispense. Right. Is <sighs> stories of biblical proportions, hell, heaven, they the... are cons- considered supernatural, aren't they? They are, and they Heaven and hell do exist in the DC world. Right, yeah. Um, and Constantine is one of them. He's he's an interesting character because... And the series with Matt Ryan, I think it is. Yeah. Um, I now... I think he was the perfect man to play it. And he's right. in the Arrowverse and things like that. But as a character, John Constantine should never be seen as a hero. He will throw allies under the bus. He will get the job done. Yeah. If you tell him to save the world from something, he will. Yeah. But what is it going to cost? Yeah. And his favourite quote, and his most famous quote, and it's in loads of things, loads of shows and things do it, is magic always comes at a cost. Right. But so does dealing with me. Wow. That is, that is a, a quote from him. But yeah, in the DC world, magic does always come with a cost. Right. And it, it, it can drive you insane. But the most powerful mages that would make like Doctor Strange like look inadequate in the DC universe yeah respect the hell out of John Constantine because he will beat them with essentially child's play tricks really yeah wow I like did you like he's go on he's very warehouse 13 in he's his main thing that he does is he just goes around and collects powerful magic artifacts and hides them in the house of mystery right Ah, but yeah, he's he's very well respected, but also hated among the superhero community. Did you like Keanu Reeves's portrayal of Burke? I liked uh, Keanu Reeves's portrayal, but as a lot of people did try and shit on it, but you know what? I enjoy different takes on characters. Right. And I thought, you know what? For a, a superhero movie back then, well, a, a supernatural movie back then, yeah, I thought he did an all right job. Yeah, and I do love um, the man that played the devil in it i can't remember i've only seen it once um oh it's it's that i can't remember his name but he was good in it and i love uh the quote in it that john constantine is the only soul that the devil himself would come to earth to collect you know what i think it's going to take more than the devil to come and get keanu reeves soul because he is the one 
Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Just an interesting character. So why would you not consider him the hero then? Well, because you always see the hero. He's worse than Batman when it comes to like pushing people away. Yeah. He is. He is just. He is someone that you consider a not nice man. He swears, he drinks, he smokes. He's got no regard for human life. But he, in actual fact, he does. He just knows that sometimes you've got to make the hard choices. Yeah. But you can't look back. And he will if, like, his team is captured. He will do what he can to try and save them. Yeah. And there is actually a comic line where he's actually one of the last heroes left on Earth. Is he? Yeah, um... In uh, uh, an event called Blight in the yeah. New Fifty Two, right. so it, it's down to him to wreck, like rescue all the other heroes, right. and he tries to give them magical advice. Like there was something, and he knows that Shazam is the kid, yeah, just because he can see through, yeah, the thing, which even really did, powerful did he know, people does, can't. Did, does he? I take it he knows Batman's Bruce Wayne then. I don't think he does. No, you don't think but he, he knows. knows all the magical side of things. Right, right. Oh, I was no, gonna no. say because you said he, he can see. Sp- no, he can see sort of. through like the illusion of yeah. Shazam just being a child, and he tries ah. to give him advice on how to use his power. But Shazam being a kid and no one trusting John yeah. Constantine, he's like, I don't need your advice, old man. Oh man, yeah. And like, yeah, there are there are incredibly powerful people that respect him. Yeah. So it's one that it's like. Uh. On the flip side, Doctor Strange in the comics has only he's been quite uppity and yeah. quite posh and privileged. It's only recently they brought him sort of lower to the ground. Ah to like see. common man and he's you know, the Playboy billionaire well, the Playboy I guess he's a millionaire. Yeah. And things like that, but I just like the more magical side of comics sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. you know, the, you, it's it's fun watching and reading like, you know, man punches good guy versus bad guy, Batman versus Joker. But sometimes you want the, the grey area. Definitely. Which a lot of like Doctor Strange and uh, Constantine will have. A lot yeah. of the magical, I find those two characters, they a lot of times deal with the morally grey areas. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just like, absorbing to be honest with you this wealth of information so interesting take mm. on it there was something i wanted to share with you actually it was an idea i've been toying with now bearing in mind it's just something i like doing you know i'm a writer and this is purely fanfic i want I'm yeah not... i mean i got you a new notebook so. yeah um you know it's going to be a take on two franchises again fanfic and i don't usually tend to dabble in fanfic what kind of fanfic? Um, well, we're not talking like and Ron grabbed uh, Harry's yeah, wand. Batman was in love. <laughs> you ever watch Life on Mars? I have. Well, great show. I had the We've idea. We talked about Gene yeah. Hunt. I had the idea originally, you know. Um, but basically, uh, sort of bear with me now. A uh, sort of Life on Mars meets Star Trek. Bear with me. Where a, a, com- a, a captain of his own ship may fall into a nebula. You know, like how Sam Tyler... Uh, as an accident wakes up in the 70s my mm. spin on it would be um a captain of a, of a random federation ship has a as a, a weird accident and he wakes up as a commander in say 100 years before in kirk's time so sort of uh, uh, and sort of re- trying to work out is he mad is he just dreaming this is this is an alien being keeping him here i, I had this idea originally about five years ago and it's purely fanfic uh, I'm not, but uh, you know what I mean. Hmm. But it was just. What do you think? I think that you've just put a thought in my head of something I saw a while ago. You know when Captain America goes back in time and he gets to live with Peggy at the end yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. Do you reckon he ever had an argument with her and turned around and went, "You know what? Screw it. I'm googling this." And she <laughs> ev- turned around and goes, "What's Google?" Yeah, yeah. A little anachronisms going on there. Yeah, yeah. Because he would have got used to modern day life. So I think it'd be the same. It'd be a shock to the system of like yeah. a capt- someone from the future coming back and being like, these people are so like barbaric and archaic. They've yeah. got nothing. Yeah. Would you struggle? What, if I went back 20 years? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Good question. No, I'd say 30 years. What's 30 years? If you went back in 89, like, do you reckon you'd struggle? 
would, yeah. Go on. Where do you reckon you'd struggle the most? Well, when do you ever see someone walking around now without their phone? Yeah. I'd struggle. Just everyday life. Like, imagine you're sat there watching a movie. You recognise someone. Where do I know him from? You can't Google it anymore. Yeah. You can't IMDB it. Yeah. You've got to pick up the phone and ring a takeaway. Can't yeah. just use an app. Yeah. So, do you reckon you struggle the most with them type of things? Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. You wake up in I mean, '89. You'd be screwed if you went back like 40 years, or even you went back to the 50s and you were a vegan. What are you gonna do? Absolutely, definitely. Mm. Yeah. So, I, 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 is it, what was I, what was I talking about then? I actually forgot. So yeah, we were just talking about going back in the past. Um, yeah, you mean like, you remembered there? Yeah, had, I just did. A, it just came to me. Had a bit me. of a brain fart. <laughs> Neural um, flatulence. Well, I mean, for those that don't know, there's an inconspicuous break, and I did, I'm probably going to decide to not edit out a lot of that. So, you know what? I can, but I won't. Um, oh, but you dear. mentioned it's getting dark now, being like winter and the time. Yes, the I did. Yeah. Did you know this might be the last time the clocks ever go back? I and hope forward? so. Because I hope so. No, seriously, I hope so. Because they're, they are thinking of running it out if we yeah. leave the EU and we might be in it and half of Ireland might, so we might as well join up and yeah. get rid of it. Or something. Someone look It's, it's just... I don't know too much. You wake up, it's dark. You come home after a long shift, it's dark. I just... I, I, I don't know about you. I'm just not keen on this time, time of year. No, it feels dingier. I know Christmas sort of serves of a distraction, but it's... Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, I, I just prefer the summer. What's your favourite time of year? On a, uh, seasonally, uh, seasonally, season, season wise. I quite like autumn, if I'm honest. So this time of year, yeah. then. Well, I'd say winter. We're in now. Yeah. So. Win autumn. Uh, Not summer, spring. Summer, summer and autumn. Uh, I'd say spring, summer. So May, June time. I like. Mm. That's always nice. Depends in the UK, and especially up north, it's always bloody raining anyway. <laughs> oh dear, wow. So yeah, what do you think of my idea then? Honestly, honestly, if you think it's a pile of shit, tell me it's a no, pile I of shit. No, I think it's good. Honestly. Yeah, we should we should write it. Maybe with some acting. Yeah, yeah, it'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Not saying like, it's not original, but it's not yeah. meant to be, you know. I, I do do original work. I, but... do, I do like them, like, mm, sort of man out of time story. Yeah. But on Fish to, out of water, they call it. On to what we were just doing. So we, first impressions of a game coming out called yes, Karen. Yes, we haven't mentioned it Karen. yet, have we? Carrion. Yeah, like the flies. Yes, we um, just basically filmed a... A commentary while yeah, you while was, I was yeah uh, I had control and we were both sat there talking our, our thoughts on uh, a game coming out next year which is what do you think of the premise I like it I I think it's an interesting spin on the game to be it's, honest it's, with you it's a Metroidvania style game but instead of setting a lab with a monster and you're running around trying to escape yeah flip side is you're the monster and so. It's quite interesting, and you have no form, and it seems to be the story is told through like signs yeah, in the game. And yeah, definitely. It's uh, but so. Yeah, what, that, what's your take on it? I think interesting. I I want to know more story of it. Yeah, well, there uh, was some. Not going. Not yeah. going. Going to tell you what it was because watch the video. But so no spoilers. But I did like how there was subtle, and I emphasise the word subtle, yeah. world building. And you had to look for it, but it was there, if yeah, you know what there, I'm referencing. There was, there, was, there was some, and some things that instantly figure out, oh, we can't go through here, yeah. water. And I liked the forward and back, you know. Yeah. Can't get to this room yet, forward, eat a bunch of the guys, come back. Yeah. And, uh, as weird as sound, the crunching noises. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be... Very realistic, though, to a yeah. certain degree. Uh, do you reckon someone sat in front of a mic and just like, ate dry pasta? <laughs> Got a bucket of chicken, went to get... <laughs> <laughs> corn on the cob. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be brilliant. I'll, I hope that's true, but yeah. Well, they, have you ever seen like how they make some weird sound effects? I, I, I have Behind seen the some. Some of I it is know, really funny. Uh, they did something... Um, really weird in the very first few episodes of Doctor Who how they made the TARDIS noise. Did you know about that? I can't remember what they did, but there no. was... Yeah, they did weird things. I know that... that you know the, the famous T-Rex roar? Yeah. It's just an elephant noise played backwards. 
Is it? Yeah, or something like that. It's 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 an animal's noise. What am I thinking of? It wasn't Jurassic Park. I think it was an old old um, film. I think it was dinosaurs. That no, I'm not thinking of dinosaurs. Um, they had a, a race in Doctor Who called the Yeti, and to make the roar noise, all they were doing is recording a flush toilet. A bit of FYI, the, there. one of the most iconic roars, Godzilla. Yeah, is someone with a leather glove. Yeah. Uh, scraping it down bass guitar strings wow that actually makes that's that's quite so it's, clever it's very unnatural and mechanical yeah, isn't it yeah like something that shouldn't exist yeah um <laughs> no that that was what they were going yeah. for it was just your facial expression like I thought you was hinting at something then because obviously not. Godzilla has deep yeah yeah it, yeah, yeah it's yeah. got meaning Godzilla is America yeah so that sort of thing <laughs> Um, oh wow! Are you into the Godzilla, King I, Kong? I do. Or? Yeah, I grew up watching all oh, like the I'm Kai, not that huge into kaiju it. movies and things yeah. like that. I like the stories. I'm not that big. Again, into I was it. a kid, so each yeah. movie no, was like, just yeah, 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 a fight between you know this guy and this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or oh, which brings to my attention as well. You know, please comment and let us know it, how you would feel on a civilization um, run. Like, cause yeah, we're, we're talking about going into like the games and we're still going to be doing this so don't panic yeah. anyone but you know doing more things to the other things to yeah. the channel as well so we'll always be doing the podcast so don't fear that oh my god not doing the podcast anymore we'll always do this but we'll be doing other things as well on the channel i think mm. it's safe and if you're say. listening on spotify or apple or google or yeah. there's like a huge list we yeah we're on, on a lot of things yeah. now aren't we um just check out our YouTube channel if you want to see our impressions of game and stuff and just tell us how we do. Yes. Um, and please tell us if you find us grating because, well, mm, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because I don't want to be one of them squeaky. Yeah. Da, there's no, oh, my God, guys. Oh, like, oh my God. Do you, know, ah! do you know who I find annoying? Oh. And there's something about his voice. It's not the way, how he presents it's pretty good. PewDiePie. Yeah, but you know what the thing is? Is I get annoyed sometimes when I'm sat down and I'm watching a nice YouTube gamer mm. and it's like, Right, I'm 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 a twenty so monotone, I'm a twenty five year old man. Yeah. I don't want to see someone acting like a teenager. Yeah. I want uh just a night just a guy playing a game, his impressions, yeah. maybe throw some jokes in there. Yeah. But don't be like screaming and all right. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to build a persona and be louder. But Definitely. Don't just the screams or the ah, ah and I the don't, horror I don't, reactions. I, I don't I can't, really. Yeah. I w I'm an adult. I want to see an adult playing a game. Yeah, I just find him annoying, though, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. But who am I? I think people might find my northern accent annoying. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. PewDiePie's, PewDiePie's an acquired taste. Yeah. Like, I'm all fine for, like, some toilet humour and some toilet jokes, but not all the time. Talking about other YouTube channels, though, the, um, like, that's actually a good thing to discuss, actually, because we've never really covered other YouTube channels. Because like, there isn't any more. There isn't. I've already said we're the first people to ever do. Oh, we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what interesting questions? What YouTube channels do you like to watch? Like, what's your thing? Like, what is on your YouTube history? Shall we say? <laughs> Thank God you didn't ask my internet history. <laughs> Oh, oh God! I, oh, I couldn't no. help but throw that joke out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I don't know. I. I subscribe to a, uh, a couple of people yeah. like gaming news ones uh, a couple of gamers i tend to like uh the yogs cast some of them yeah. um a lot of music ones yeah that's basically me ah uh some fact ones yeah but yeah i like kind of thing, yeah. i like I'm quite boring law runner law runner's all right have you seen his stuff have you yeah uh, the Who Addicts, have you ever heard of them? You keep telling me about them. Me too. So you've actually sat and watched some Law Runner stuff, have you? He's the boldish guy. But, um... I've, I've heard of him, I've never yeah. seen any of his stuff. Oh, he, he's quite good. There's uh, Vsauce. I do like Vsauce, I've seen some of them. Yeah. Um, just um, stuff like that. I used that. to watch quite a lot because I quite like the science -y Vsauce yeah. 1. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, and Vsauce... Two. Christ is I, I like I, I didn't use to game but, theory I like I, a lot of game theory there's one reaction video that I, I watch so much, no. um, I never used to like reaction stuff but there's I one don't. reactionary stu 
stuff. Uh, uh, there's one exception to that. I follow a woman. She's uh, I think she's from New York called Seska Says. And she's at the minute. She's reacting to a lot of the Torchwood stuff, which I'm, she's she's quite a diehard Doctor Who fan. Usually, I don't like reactionary stuff, but yeah, she's the exception. So, That's quite good. Yeah. This, do you know what? For some reason, this feels like a very chilled out. Yeah. Episode, doesn't it? Well, this is what I enjoy about this channel. This is what I enjoy. Yeah, about Yeah, we the have podcast. ups, we have downs. Yeah. We have hyper ones it, it's it, the spontaneity of it. You know, we we don't pretend to be something we're not, and. You know, you're going to get us on different days. You're going to get us when we're chilled. You're going to get us when we're hyper. You're going to get us when we're excited. Mm. And do you know what I mean? It's, it is what it is. Do you, you want to, in this one, talk about favourite space battles that people have said while it's fresh in your mind? Oh, dear. See, I can only remember about three or four suggestions. And Once the... we talk about them, they're, they're coming to you. We yeah. just want to get these questions out of the way. Fair enough. So the ones I got that I remember was there was a Star Wars one. It wasn't the Battle of Endor. It was oh, was it the Battle of Hoth? I want to say. Um, Battle I, of Hoth didn't take place in space. It took place. Then on I'm the thinking of something else. Then the yeah no with the giant forget. walking camels. That's on the it planet. It was. Um, yeah, no, we'll get back. I'll get back to Discounting that. Discounting it. Yeah, um, basically, the judge has ruled. <laughs> <laughs> there was the one my mum suggested in Guardians of the Galaxy two. The, the opening, well, it wasn't the opening sequence, yeah. but it was Against one of the, the first sovereign scenes. And all the drones. Um, there was a Star Quite Trek cinematic, one. Though. Or the, uh, oh, the it, there was a battle in the Wrath of Khan. Um, the Battle of the Montara Nebula, I want to say, in Wrath of Khan. It was the second sequence where uh, Khan if, battles if Kirk and the Millennium. remember them all, or we'll do it next I'll, I'll have to look at, yeah. look at them up, but I but do remember that I suggestion. I believe you wanted to talk briefly about the great, the one, the only Vince McMahon. Did I? Yes. Oh, right, yeah. Um, apparently... Well, I mean, so we I don't say, know when I say episode. Vince McMahon with a grain of salt because, from what I understand, <laughs> he's not he's not good. Well, it's it's rub people up the wrong way. I don't know when this episode will air. That's uh, entirely up to my colleague. Um, but it will probably be not this week, but next week, right. which is only known to us <laughs> and known to all the listeners, unless you're that yeah. out. Anyway, uh, Vince McMahon, yeah. Basically, what's happened is he has done a deal with certain people in Saudi Arabia, where he, where these people will officially, or supposedly, will be hosting certain shows. Now then, this has created uproar because I read an article uh, saying because the, from the, a, a a decent source, a decent, very reliable source, saying. It's rubbed a lot of the talent the wrong way because there's a lot of trouble in Saudi Arabia that they're very against LGBT, they're very against women's rights. So, understandably so... Well, I saw that the women performers... Yeah, don't um, want to perform there because of that reason, which you um, cannot blame. No, it's not that. It's that normally their suits, sometimes they can be skimpy, let's, yeah. let's face it, but yeah. they have to wear, like, essentially a wetsuit over yeah. their body and it covers everything up to wrists and even the necks yeah you can't show legs you can't show anything but how can you wrestle in in them type of circumstance in them do you know what i mean i think i don't know the ins, of, ins and outs of it i'm not pretending that i do there's a lot of pressure and the police are yeah over there are, are, are and i have it on good authority that for those who are in the know in the wrestling world kevin owens is not happy about it john cena isn't overly impressed with it and daniel bryan isn't happy about it either and i he... know one of them names so <laughs> i'm i'm learning <laughs> you don't know who daniel bryan is no he was well but anyway he uh, these are people that don't just work uh, admirably in the ring if, if you are in the knowing wrestling you will also realize that these are people that have a lot of sway behind the scenes as well so for these people not to be happy by vince's choice Mm, some controversies on the rise i feel i mean to say but who are they performing for is it only the elite the rich or is it the normal people of dubai i don't know i i i, I admittingly i haven't i haven't looked that much into it i'll probably do more research as more comes out but it's it is it's, it's created that the, the 
the point I'm trying to make is it's pretty obvious it's created tension for the talent and that and it's also apparently the uh, I don't know the ins and outs of it but they're unhappy with someone was unhappy as well I think it was Kevin Owens correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure someone will um if it is wrong but the, the, the there's another aspect in this deal with Saudi Arabia that's left them unhappy the the other aspects I don't really want to vocalize or verbalize because I'm not entirely sure but there's a couple of things going on with this deal so what is that your people aren't happy about personal it. take on it though um you got to keep your talent happy and personally if i was running a business in wrestling would i want to put my talent in a place where it could be putting them in potential danger no personally i wouldn't want that but i'm not vince mcmahon and we were worlds apart from each other i'm a working class man in lancashire vince mcmahon is a multi-millionaire virgin on billions um and he's a bit of a tycoon actually now isn't he so mm. We're two very different walks of life, and I don't pretend to know what's going, what's rattling on in Vince's mind. But um, if I had to be honest, I can understand why people are upset, and I think I would be too. Yeah, especially a lot of, I, I guess, the female performers. A lot of them, it's like they're walking 50 years in the past. Yeah. Well, even would more. You want, I mean, it's not even wrestling. Imagine if you was a pantomime troupe, or... You know, you was working in that type of field and someone said to you, right, you got to perform in uh, Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan. Would you be happy? I don't know. I think... It'd be interesting. Are, people in Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia do deserve... I'm not saying that them two countries are similar to each no, other by, yeah. by, by no means, but countries that have controversy controversy around them i don't i've got to be careful how i yeah. word this very careful i mean do you not think the people of dubai deserve to see puss in boots is that what you're <laughs> saying <laughs> well i mean to say of course you do anyone from any walk of life has a right to see entertainment and yeah. i mean anybody um but i can understand it why the talent would be reluctant performing in certain places for obvious reasons though you've and got to maintain that balance just because of the place it is there's probably certain rules like you can't do this, yeah. you can't do this, you must do this, you must be here, you can't... Going back in wrestling, I think people forget as well that... See, I'm not, I don't really have an opinion on it. I'm on that blessed fence again, everybody. But people forget Ric Flair did a show in North Korea. Think about that. This was when it, the Cold War was at its high. Ric Flair did a match in North Korea. You know who Ric Flair is? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. He no, died, he, didn't he? Is he yeah. Dead? No, he's still no, alive. He's, he's, he's very old now, admittedly so. But people don't people don't realise that. And WWE won't, will never acknowledge it, though, because it had a very high attendance at uh, WWF at that time, when it was called WWF, never had. It, when Ric Flair did wrestle the North Korean wrestler, it had an attendance of 110,000 people came and watched that. Look that up, everybody. I said that quite quietly and then. And these but, yeah. are the Korean people that came to see it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And this, p putting into consideration, this was the hype of the Cold War. This wasn't that long after the Korean War. So, you was... look very quiet there. I mean, I'm to just say... thinking it. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of? Go on. Rocky IV. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. It was though, look it up. But yeah, it, it was very much that type of feel to it. It was essentially the rocky four before rocky four in that aspect or well, it could have been after but i'm sure it was in the 70s when this happened so yeah, that i'd like to see a movie of that yeah huh. wow see i like things like that entertainment yeah movies music whatever can breach gaps between like wars and absolutely wars and this is why i love entertainment look man. at music yeah i mean i think everyone in the world can agree and i don't care what walk of life you're from everyone at least one person in every walk of life, country, language, will agree that Bono's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Bono's a dick. Oh. Do you not like Bono? No. No, I do not. I don't really know that much about him, to oh, be honest with you. Oh, he's just an arrogant twat. Is he? Enough said. <laughs> he gave everyone on iTunes got that update. Do you remember years ago when they got... Uh, what band's he with? You too. You too. Yeah. Everyone got the album for free, but it was, uh, you didn't get a choice if you wanted to accept it or not. It was just on your phone right. or on your iPod. And everyone was like, why? Oh, dear. Oh, and dear. He, he thinks he's like the best. But, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really like some of his songs. I'm not a huge YouTube fan. No. 
Yeah, but anyway, but fame does go to people's head. Music-wise, you know, you, you made a very interesting statement before. You're not a fan of plays. No, well, not really. No. no, I mean, if you said some of the songs, I would probably be like, oh yeah. No, um, no, no. Message in a bottle. Don't stand so close to me. Every breath you take. Every breath you take. That's up there. Yeah, yeah that's, I like. That's I like the plays. Everything she does. Every little thing she does. Oh is yeah, magic. no. See, I don't. Yeah. Every little thing. Sorry. I, I got carried away then. Where's my big red buzzer? <laughs> <laughs> do you like Gary Newman? Did he do Cars? He did Cars. Yeah, I like Gary He Newman. did High Friends Electric. Ah, don't ask me to sing that because it's more sound and voice, that yeah. song. Do you know that song? No. Uh, you like Pet Shop Boys? I like Pet Shop Boys. Everyone okay. likes the Pet Shop Boys. Uh, it's a Sin, great song. If there were no Pet Shop Boys, did you know there'd be no David Tennant? That's where David Tennant got his name from. Neil Tennant, Pet Shop Boys. Useless information Well, for no, you. he still exists. He'd just have a different He'd name. He'd just have a different name, yeah. Yeah, yeah it'd be like, uh, I don't know. Can you imagine that? Should, should we have a baby? David no. Savage. <laughs> David Savage. I don't know what his real name is. I just know he, 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 he's... I can't remember his last name, actually. I did know it. I just... But yeah, we'll just call him David Savage on, from now so on. So Tennant is a stage name. Yeah, David Tennant. He got the, you know the main singer in Pet Shop Boys, the one who sings. Yeah, yeah. His name is Neil Tennant. I I Tennant always thought name. that was his real name. It isn't. Mm. I watched a thing with David Tennant. Yeah. Um, was it who do you think you are? No, it's um, because I watched the same thing with Daniel Radcliffe as well. Right. Which was really interesting. But David Tennant was like nothing prepares you in life for being the doctor because the fame and the fans it just goes over yeah like he can't do anything normal ever again he says if he walks into a room in a party yeah. he hates it sometimes now yeah because he walks into a room and everyone goes silent and it's yeah. like he sucked all the air out of the room because they want to see the doctor yeah that is david tennant now yeah and he's like he doesn't understand it he can walk into a room with like robert de niro and everyone's looking at david tennant yeah can you imagine that level would that make you uncomfortable you reckon well do you know what i know we've sort of scraped talking about it i think it was the the last recording we ever did shall we say and i think the recording before that but actually that was a question i wanted to ask you i think i've asked a very similar question to you before is let's go into let's delve into fantasy land for a minute and say we oh, are we, if we're in fantasy land can my house be made of gingerbread <laughs> it can be made of gingerbread so you're sat in your gingerbread house we have millions and millions of subscribers oh god that would stink wouldn't it would it would the gingerbread <laughs> house stink could you handle the fame you ask me do you reckon you could well i'm quite faceless really aren't i yeah i'm you're the you did get recognized i did get recognized for my voice so yeah. i'll just go around not talking <laughs> I don't know. Like, so do you reckon you couldn't handle it then? You sort of... It wouldn't bother me because I don't really go out. But no. at the same point, I I couldn't be doing with... If I went out the house... Yeah. And like, You're just getting a loaf of bread and like... Yeah, and like... <laughs> yeah, you get a loaf of bread. Next minute, it's over like the front paper. Tom doesn't eat whole grain. Why? <laughs> Tom says... <laughs> oh, Can you imagine wow. like that yeah, sort of... Yeah, yeah. Um... It'd be one of them for me if I had to be really honest with you. Proverbial cards on the table. I'd love it for the first five minutes, but when it becomes a part of life, it'd be like, okay. Do you know if... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Be, I, I, like... don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I know we're... This is just pure speculation at this point. It really I like, is. Um, go on. I think... Now, this is... Right. If I was, like, a big, like, musician or yeah. movie star or something like that, and there were paparazzi outside my house... I'd walk to the gate, hand one, one of them a fiver and say, I can't be bothered going to the shop. Will you go for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, Greg's is down the road. Get me a sausage roll. Oh, dear. I'll give you a 20-second interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're there anyway. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. But Look, yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm dying for a box of Jaff cakes. <laughs> go get me them. I will go in whatever fucking pose you want. Yeah. I've, I've got a Nazi uniform back there. I'll wear that. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> fucking hell. They have. Oh. You might as well use oh. them. Oh. 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 I, do, I do hate the idea of paparazzi, though. Yeah. Like, sometimes they go too far. Just to put it out there, I assure you, everybody, that Koala was just joking. Yeah, he does I... not have a Nazi uniform in his closet. 
No. I'm 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 saving you. Oh here. God, no! I'm no, saving your career here. I'm just career. Saying. We don't get paid for this. <laughs> hobby. Saving your hobby. Yeah. Saving your image, self-image. Call it what you like. What would you do if we got paid for this? Because honestly, Ooh. we've had this discussion before. We have, but not and so publicly. Yes. Yeah. I think we have slightly, but I don't think people realise that if any money started to come from this, if we got big enough, we pull it back into the channel and then the rest to charity. I don't. Yeah, think... I don't. I don't want it. Right. I I actually given this some. I have given this some major thought, and as long as our product doesn't sacrifice itself by changing just to appease certain media types yeah or sponsors or something yeah i would give it i would probably give uh, most of my whatever i earn to charity i just love doing this this is my this this is just a hobby i I, I don't want to sound so cliche i'm fine with my work i'm I'm enjoying the work this is this is it this is this is what um great art the greatest artists i tried to not copy their ideal but learn from the ideal is that as long as my no one interferes with my work or I have to make sacrifices. Yeah, it's and our creation. Everyone else keeps yeah. noses out. So I don't. I would never want to be at a podcast that be like, yeah, we'll talk about such and such a thing as long as you buy Coca Cola. I would never yeah, want like, to sell we, me. Yeah, you know what I mean dignity. But I I do like doing like loads of little projects. Yeah, like yeah. Podcasts, maybe gaming. I, I'm having fun. have a look at this like yeah. wrestling. Yeah, I'm having fun. Um, I would never change um, what we do. I'd like to get better. I would. In, in terms of quality, but that's about it. I think our sound quality is better than like the very first. Yeah. I mean, so like if, you, if, if you want to take the conversation in that direction, like, do you remember, like, have you heard our very first episode? I or? haven't gone back, no. Have you not? No. I did a couple of days ago. Help. We're not as bad as you think, you know. I mean, so I know it was only like three months ago. You make it sound like we're this, you know, this, <laughs> this arse up job and we made a right pig's ear out of it. We didn't do that bad, you know. Yeah, it was all right, really. It was not. <laughs> I mean, technically, this is number what, 11? Yeah, it must be. Possibly 11, 12, 12 podcasts, if, if I 11th save it episode, a week. yeah. But yeah, this has been a very reminiscent, weird one. We're quite chilled out. In this. Yeah, I, like I, it. I don't see why not. I like how, if you noticed, each episode has a certain theme and a certain feel yeah, to it. Yeah, which we don't plan at all. It's no, just, we oh, don't. Have you seen this news? <laughs> we do like, not at all. There's something we need to talk about. Go on. Or at least mention. Go on. Keanu Reeves got a girlfriend. Hey! I'm, I'm happy for him. Apparently, your girlfriend isn't though. Well, what was no, going? no, she she is. She I is I just happy. merely made the comment. Um, She's probably about to become the most hated woman in Hollywood because she's got Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Let's not jealous people. But no, apparently. Yeah. Twitter and the internet loves her. Oh, yeah. Because all people want is him happy. He's yeah. like this. Keanu Reeves, his name means like Cool Breeze from the Mountain or something. Yeah. What a name. And what he, a name. He, I, did, I never knew the name actually meant that, but. He lives up to that name, doesn't he? He yeah. does it. He. In anything he's in, he does feel like this cool breeze that yeah. just comes in. Yeah, definitely. He, like, he's always given to charity. Yeah. He basically lives out of a suitcase. Yeah. It, he doesn't take more than he needs. Yeah. It's, I don't know, I think the rest of the world, I'm not he's saying... He's so ma- laid back. Don't make he, a yeah, religion yeah. out of the guy like people did with the area of David Bowie. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know about that? I don't know. I must admit. Oh, God. Right, so after the movie Labyrinth, yeah. uh, religion about David Bowie appeared. And it's um, the the answers to, you can look this up, the answers to life, death, mm. the universe, all exist in the area. Wow. Do you know what the area is? No. David Bowie, David Bowie's groin, his cock piece in um, Labyrinth is apparently so perfect that it spawned a religious... Now, David Bowie is an idol of mine, and that is a <laughs> lot of man. Yeah. Like he, he is, he he was a sex symbol till he died. Yeah, of course he was. And yeah. obviously, he's got this like to quote, uh, uh, saying he has this like he walks into a room, in anything he's in, he's got this big dick energy. Yeah, he he is he's that man that walks into the room and sucks everything out. Yeah, and he knows it. Yeah, like he's th- he's probably the coolest man alive. Apart when he Freddie w- Mercury. When he was alive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Freddie Mercury is the same. Yeah. <laughs> but to spawn an entire religion based on 
a, mo- a children's. Well, interesting. It's a real thing. You can look interesting it up. Interesting enough, it's funny you should say that. A good couple of years ago now, I came across an interview David Bowie did in the early 90s. Very early 90s. And he said, uh, uh, I can't remember the interview. You'll have to look at it. We'll probably find yeah. it. If, you, you might, if you're a big fan of David Bowie, you might have seen it yourself. And someone asked him, how well do you reckon the internet will go? And he turned around, this interview was quite obnoxious with him. Well, I don't think it will last two minutes. And David Bowie said, I disagree. I think it will take over the world. And this was in 93, 94. He says, I think it will change the media. I think it will change the way we look at things. That is David Bowie in the early 90s. Now, I ask you, how could he have possibly have known that? He's, he was quite a forward thinker, though. Yeah. He was. And I but that in itself, but to here's, make... Here's the thing with what? David Bowie. I'm going to say his name different each time because he pronounced it different. Yeah, all right. I was going to say what his actual pronunciation is. Bowie, maybe. Bowie, Bowie. <laughs> um, here's the thing with him. I'm a big fan of him, yeah. but I don't like much of his music. Interesting. I like the man, and yeah. I like the stories yeah. about the man, like the tech, the uh, the album that was released in America, and they were like, "No, you've got to change it because you're wearing a dress on the front." And he's like, "No, nah, fuck it, it's going over there." <laughs> Do you like his forward thinking? His I, I like his forward his thinking work. and his refusal to yeah. bend. Did you ever listen to his last song though? Did you ever see the music video? Yes. What's your take on that? It it was quite good. It was good, it was. wasn't it? Um, but no, I just I like his un unbreak. He wouldn't compromise. Yeah, and that, you know I respect that. Yeah. Another question I wanted to randomly ask you. No, going slightly off topic. Um, what is your take on John Candy, the comedian? You one who passed. Uh, he died in ninety four. He was in Uncle Buck. Cool I know, uh, yeah, yeah. What's your take on him? Um, like, I'm just interested to know your opinion on the guy. I've only really seen him in Cool Runnings, really. Never, you never seen Uncle Buck. <gasps> That's who I was trying to think of. That's who you look like in college. <laughs> I suppose I did a little. Yeah, bit, a little bit. I? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But no, I really liked Cool Runnings. But yeah. I was sad the other day because I I like to make movie references all the time and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. And I made a Cool Runnings reference that someone at the age of twenty didn't understand and didn't know that movie. And when I told them the movie, they're like, "I've never heard of it." That is a sad. Just, what was the reference? It um, the, it it was something like um, they were looking in the mirror and I'm, I stood behind them and went, "Do you see strength?" They were like, "What?" He goes, "Say it." I see strength. I see power. I see a badass mother. And you know what? For someone to... No, I wasn't at work. It was just... I don't look that big now, do I? I don't like... No. (laughs) Um, Does that not make you sad that these classic movies... Cool Runnings. The Jamaican bobsled team in real life yeah, i it, love it, so it, it much based on true events that yeah film, wasn't it they had their helmets are watermelons yeah but not real what they're just colored like watermelons yeah and i love it ah. and they do they actually do like little songs before they start like feel the rhythm feel the yeah. arm get on down this bobsled <laughs> so i love it oh wow so you're a big fan of john candy then he was not- also in space balls he had a cameo in home alone i wasn't a big fan of him but i did love um you, what little Paul you Rubin. saw him in, you yes, enjoyed it. I did. Do you know? It was, how did he die? It was a, was heart it? attack. It was yeah. a big guy, bless him. He, he was the biggest, right? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the biggest star I've ever been is 22 Storm. John Candy died at 25 Storm. He was a big man, big guy, bless a him. Big guy. Yeah. So you know who John Candy is? Yay! Yeah, he was, he was a great. I like. Do you ever look back at older comedians and laugh more? There is another actor I want to... Uh, ca- carry on. Sorry, dude. I'm just going to find you like, now. Like um, Jim Carrey. I'm quite happy he's around now. Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Do you know who Chevy Chase uh, I know the name. Put a face to it. Uh, I'll show you the face. Go on, you were saying. Yeah, do you, do you like that Jim Carrey's starting to come back? And Eddie Murphy. I was talking yeah. to a friend yesterday. That's him how he looks like now. Oh, yeah. And that's him when yeah. he was younger. Yeah, no, I know, I know who he Go is. Go on, sorry, you were saying. Um, yeah, I was talking to a friend yesterday, and they mentioned that for the first time in years, they watched an Eddie Murphy movie, and yeah. they, they turned around to me, and they said they'd forgotten how much they missed them. That level of comedy, the yeah. Eddie Murphy, uh, 
uh, Jim Carrey's, you know, that's all. Yeah, thing. definitely, definitely. I haven't seen a Jim Carrey film for a long time, to be honest with mm. you. I I was thinking I want I'm gonna rewatch that sometime soon. The Mask. Yeah, that's one it? of my favorite films of all time. <laughs> I do love it. A lot of the jokes are yeah. so good. Yeah, it, I remember when I first used to watch it. I was I was very young when I watched it. I was only, I, it went over my head a lot of the time. So yeah, good film though. Good. Yeah, film. It, it was brilliant. Anyway, it's, do, you, do you reckon we should start wrapping we it up? We should start I, wrapping it up. I was genuinely gobsmacked when I looked at the time. Like, oh, yeah. I think this one feels like we ramble a bit, and it, it, this is more just like a quiet conversation, if I'm honest. Yeah, though. it is. Yeah, like, um, I don't think that's a, is that a bad thing? No. What day do you reckon we upload that gaming thing, though? We decided if when this can, is going up on I, Saturday, I, right, our look, upload... The first podcast, the one we did before this one, mm. upload that this weekend. Uh, we'll still do a podcast next week. Uh, we'll, we'll upload this next week. Um, the gaming one, I, can upload I would say Wednesdays. I can upload... Wednesdays. Yeah, I'll yeah. upload it tonight. Yeah, so, yeah tonight. We tomorrow, when's best for you? Um, if, if anyone actually listens to this, yeah, and gets this far, well done. Um, <laughs> would you please like, comment, subscribe, ding the bell if you're on um, Spotify. Thank you. If you're on any of the other podcast things like Apple, subscribe and uh, yeah, if you've I wanted to ask if anyone has any suggestions for any games they want us to play yeah. that are maybe a bit weird out there or unknown, let us know because we both love broken and, games. And as always, you know, because we never know uh, who's listening. Hello, Jennifer Lawrence. Really? <laughs> you think she's going to listen to two bumble folks in the middle of Darwin? Hey, what, we don't know what anyone does in the spare time. Yeah, that's true. But uh, anyway, I have been Dancing Bear. And I've been Koala. And as always, see you next week. See you next week.